All right, so um, before we, we go into each phylum, I want to talk a little bit about tissue formation because it's hard for you guys to realize that some of these animals that we're going to reference actually have no tissues, which means what's their one uh, functioning part? A cell, okay? They have a cell that does the work for them, okay? So tissues is a feature that develops as the phylum becomes more complex. So the types of tissues, ectoderm, you gotta think of uh, your skin, so you think of it as the outer layer. The mesoderm is the one that, that is in between and it, it basically provides a space for internal organs. So you're gonna see uh, words like muscle, blood, uh, things of that nature. And then endoderm is the inner layer and you're gonna see more of the major organs like lung, and it gives rise to the digestive tract. So if an organism does not have an endoderm, it cannot have a digestive tract. For each phylum, as you did, I'm gonna cover what they're uh, mainly known as, which that sometimes is linked to a name that references a characteristic that every organism has in the phylum. There's symmetry, reproduction, habitat, cephalization, and feeding. So it might be a little bit different from what you did, or is that exactly what you did? Probably exactly. All right, so periphera. The AKA is, after you heard the sponges, okay? They're also known as sponges. That's the, that's the actually easy one. And not the alufa, that's what it says, just the live organism, sponges. Symmetry is asymmetrical. They do not have symmetry because their shape is not distinctive. You can't. Uh, find a, a central point or cut them down the middle. Where do they live? In the water. Okay. What? How do they reproduce? Both ways. And some of the common, as they mentioned, was budding and regeneration. So my sponge. So sponges have no cephalization, and they really are my simplest of all the phylums in the animal kingdom. They are the phylum that uses cells for feeding. They're called filter feeders, and they have two specialized cells in order to help them feed. One, anybody know in the presentation, did you come across that? I think it's um, porocytes and chewanocytes. Eh, sort of. That's, that's kind of like a sub, it's called collar cells, okay, and they ingest the food, and then amoebocytes digest the food. So they have a cell known as a collar cell that uses, and if you need to remind yourself, if a cell ingests food, what process is taking place? Diffusion, okay? It could be, you know, it could be diffusion, it could be active transport, depends, but it's taking substances in through the cell, so molecules are moving in some direction, okay? And amoebocytes digest the cell, so that's like their, their system, in a sense, taking place in the cell. So here is a close-up of the sponge and the special other specialized cells that they have, and you don't have to know those for the test, okay? But there's other cells that they use in order to uh, function, and that's a, a sign, I mean, a diagram of them. All right, nadarians. And nadarians are also known as, what did you learn from our group? Stinging creatures. Stinging creatures, correct. Or stinging cells, I think is what I have. And I'm sorry that's so small, but I'll zoom in. I just found this diagram once and it broke down everything we needed. How's your symmetry? Uh, radial. Radial. So right now, if I was to ask you who's more complex, peripheral or nadarians, what's your answer? Nadarians. Why? Because they have symmetry. The other organism has no symmetry, this one does. That shows complexity, okay? Habitat. I'll go back. Water in the ocean. Darians, which are the second five in the animal kingdom that we're going to cover. They have uh, stinging cells, so that's kind of what they're commonly known as. They do not, have, I mean, they are uh, radial symmetry, which means you could get a central point and kind of branch out. They live in, in water. Okay, let's clarify that. Water. And um, they reproduce how? Both ways, sexually and actually, and just a common uh, reproductive uh, cycle for them is budding. So since we're getting to a little bit more complex, 
Um, they still don't have cephalization, but they do have groups. And my groups include anemones, and I'm gonna highlight them in different colors, jellies, and hydras, okay? So that you know that there's three main groups of nadarians. So my feeding for my uh, nadarians, and you guys did good with this. They feed, well they're carnivores, and they feed with uh, what they have called stinging cells, and they mentioned these, they're called nematocysts, okay? Or, oh, is it nematocytes, if you wanna say, or ne whatever. But that, that's their stinger, and their stinger emits venom. And if you look here, they do like a, a zoomed picture, and they show you their tentacles and where it comes out. But they also, and I think you guys mentioned this, have a gastrovascular cavity for digestion. Because you can't just think of how they feed, you gotta think of how they process the food. So they have a cavity, which means their mouth, wherever the food enters is gonna pretty much come out of the same uh, opening because it's only one opening. So the food comes in, it's processed, and, it, and it's released through the same opening. 